Hey there, this video is gonna be all about crop factors in the Canon R5C, not just for shooting in Super 35 and Super 16, but all the crop factors that you can get with this camera. So I actually went looking for this information when I was doing research for a video that I made about the R5C using the Canon Focal Reducer. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave that video linked down below. Now, I first looked at the full technical specs for the R5C on the Canon USA page, and it didn't specify crop factors in video mode. So I went on Google, I started looking around, and eventually I came across this page. And scrolling down in this document, I saw that you could it was 1.460 in 17 by nine, and 1.534 in 16 by nine, which I immediately recognized from the C70. Now, I know these are different cameras, so I was a little bit, you know, I was questioning this. So I did my own calculations, which I'll explain in this video so you can do them yourself as well. And then I contacted Canon. Now, when I contacted Canon, they confirmed that my numbers, my calculations were correct, and that they said that the spec sheet that I sent them, which is what I just showed you, was actually from Canon Cyprus, not Canon USA, and that, quote, each Canon geographical sales region has their own website and are responsible for their own tech writing. It looks like they didn't double check this one and maybe just cut and paste from the C70, which is very wrong. And that was definitely my uh, suspicion as well. Now, this was super interesting for a couple reasons, but mainly because I thought it was an official Canon website, but I didn't realize it was Canon Cyprus and not Canon USA, and that each country publishes their own numbers. Also, this didn't get me closer to the numbers that I was looking for based on what I could find online, but what I calculated was accurate and Canon verified this. Now, most of you know that Canon mirrorless cameras, meaning the non-cinema cameras like the R5C, the C70, C300, C500, et cetera, not those, they usually have a crop factor of 1.6 when you're in photo and video. And the R5C does have a 1.6 times crop factor when you're in APS-C photo mode, just like in the R5, which makes sense because the photo mode in the R5C is pretty much identical to the photo mode in the R5. But we're gonna be talking about video in this video. Now, here are the numbers that Canon gave me and we'll verify this with some calculations. They said that in Super 35, and this is compared to full frame, you get a 1.375 times crop, and in Super 16, you get a 2.75 times crop. Now, keep in mind, these are for 17 by nine, right? Not 16 by nine. All right, so how do we figure this out? Well, most crop factors are compared against a full frame sensor. So if you're calculating crop factors of, let's say a Super 35 or a Micro Four Thirds sensor or any kind of sensor, then you can use the sensor's physical width and compare that with the width of a full frame sensor. Now, full frame sensors are 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters in a ratio of three to two. And the reason for that is those are the dimensions of 35 millimeter film, and so that's where the standard of full frame comes from for photography. But since the R5C is a full frame camera, we will use the raw resolutions in the R5C to calculate the crop factors in the non full frame modes. Crop factors are only based on the horizontal aspect or the first number of the two numbers in a resolution because the vertical aspect or the second number is just based on the first number and of course the aspect ratio. So if you know what the horizontal aspect is and the aspect ratio, you can calculate what the vertical aspect is. So in the R5C, the full frame mode in RAW is 8192 by 4320. This is a ratio of 17 by nine. We'll talk more about 17 by nine and 16 by nine later. So if we change this to from full frame to super 35, we can see that the resolution now is 5952 by 3140. And if we go into super 16, we can see that the resolution is 2976 by 1570. So we only really need to know the first number, which is the width to calculate the crop factor. So let's start with super 35 in raw. We have a resolution of 5952 by 3140. We take 8192, which was the horizontal number for full frame raw, and we divide by 5952, we get 1.376. That is pretty close to the number that Canon gave me at 1.375, so we'll count that. Now for Super 16 raw, we take 2976 by 1570, we take 8192 divided by 2976, and we get 2.75, again, that's the number that Canon gave us. So that's where these numbers come from. So like I said, this is all in the 17 by nine ratio, which is the full width of the sensor. So this is the same in the oversampled modes with compressed XF AVC and MP4 codex when shooting in 17 by nine. Now every camera handles 17 by nine and 16 by nine differently. 
So for example, before we get on talking about the R5C, the Sony FX3, which a lot of you know about, actually oversamples both the 17 by nine and 16 by nine modes from its full width of 4.2K and you actually get the same horizontal field of view with less vertical. I go over this in a video I made about shooting raw video on the FX3, so if you're interested in that, there'll be a, it'll be linked down below. Now the R5C reads the full width in 17 by nine and then it just crops in slightly to get 16 by nine. And you can see this when you're shooting in the 8K MP4, when you're looking at the full width 17 by nine, and then you set it to the 16 by nine, it definitely crops in a little bit. So you can't actually shoot 16 by nine in 8K on the R5C in RAW because it will give you the full width when you're shooting in RAW. So if you want 16 by nine in 8K, you have to go over and change this to MP4. And then you have the option of shooting in 17 by nine, which is 8192, or 1699, which is 7680 by 4320. So like we were doing before, we're gonna use the horizontal number to figure out our crop factor. So we take 8192, which is the width in 17 by nine, and we divide by 7680, which is the width in 16 by nine, we get 1.067. So there is a 6.7% crop in 16 by nine. So if you're shooting 16 by nine in either 8K or 4K, you're actually cropped in a bit from full frame. And you can see this in all those different modes, like I said. So I was actually unaware of this for a little while and I think a lot of people are too, but the way that this camera handles DCI and UHD or 17 by nine, 16 by nine, is that it crops in a little bit when you're shooting in 16 by nine by about 6.7%. So there are actually a few other crops in the R5C that I wanna mention. Now, first of which are the lens corrections. And there are several lens corrections and let me talk about those. So if we go in the menu under page six, we have a bunch of different lens corrections. The first one here is the peripheral illumination correction that has to do with vignetting. When you turn that on and off, you don't get any cropping. You just take care of the vignetting and that is told by the camera knowing what lens is on there and it accounts for that, but no cropping, so that's fine. The chromatic aberration correction corrects for chromatic aberrations. That does not crop as you can see. The diffraction correction does not crop as well as you turn that on and off. But the last one is the distortion aberration correction. And this one does crop slightly as I turn it on and off. And the reason for this is this is based on the lens. And again, the camera has the information from the lens, so it applies a distortion correction and that will crop in slightly. This will vary depending on the lens you're using and maybe even the focal length, I'm not sure. So keep that in mind, but all the crops that I was just talking about that was all, with all this turned off, this will add another crop if you do put that on. Now, this is disabled in RAW automatically since of course, when you're recording RAW, it's not gonna apply any corrections. You're just getting it right off the sensor. So you can also see these corrections disabled if you shoot RAW photos and then disable all the corrections in your photo editing software. Next, I wanna talk about the RFS and EFS lens correction. So this is located in the menu just below the distortion aberration correction. And you can see that it's grayed out and that's because I'm in full frame mode. So you need to be in super 35 or super 16 mode to use this. Now RFS and EFS lenses are generally designed for that 1.6 times Canon crop. So if you're using a camera like the R5C or the C70, that's a little bit wider than 1.6, you might get some vignetting issues. So that's what this is gonna take care of. So if you're using a crop sensor lens and you're still getting vignetting in super 35 mode with the peripheral correction turned on, that was the one that helped with vignetting, you can actually turn on this RFS EFS lens crop and it will crop in just a little bit more to accommodate for the image circle of your crop sensor lens. So what I can do here is I can come over and put this in super 35 mode. And then if I go down to the RFS EFS lens, if I can turn this on and off, you can see that it crops in just slightly. So that will just crop in a little bit to take care of any extra vignetting from having a lens that doesn't have a big enough image circle. In terms of the numbers for this, it's a 1.09 times crop in 17 by nine or 1.04 times crop in 16 by nine. Note there's a smaller crop in 16 by nine because like we already figured out, 16 by nine is already cropped in from 17 by nine. And remember, you can only use this EFS RFS lens crop when you're using non-RAW Super 35 or Super 16 modes. The next crop factor I wanna talk about is the image stabilization that's in the R5C. Now, most of you know that the R5C does not have IBIS, right? It doesn't have the physical sensor shift stabilization. It has a digital stabilization and there's two modes. So in the menu, we can go to the seventh page here under the first tab, and we can go down to digital IS, and we can turn this on. 
There are a few different options here. We have standard and we also have high and the high crops in quite a bit more than the standard and turning it off will zoom out even more. So if you're curious about the crops for this, for the standard mode, it's 1.1 times crop and in the high mode, it's 1.43 times crop. Now what happens if you are applying multiple crops at the same time, how do you figure this out? All you have to do is multiply all the crop factors together to get your final crop factor. Let's do a couple examples. First of all, what happens if you're shooting in Super 35 and 16 by nine? Well, we take 1.375, which was the crop factor in Super 35 and 1.067, which was the crop factor in 16 by nine, and you multiply them together and you get 1.467. So you get roughly a 1.467 or 1.47, if you wanna round a little bit, crop when you're shooting 16 by nine in Super 35. That's a number you probably wanted to know. Another example, let's say we're shooting in Super 16 and 16 by nine, and we have the high digital image stabilization turned on. Well, for that, we do 2.75 times 1.067 times 1.43, which will give us 4.196, which is a very heavy crop. So again, if you're using multiple crop factors, just multiply them all together and that's what you'll get. All right, so let me try to wrap all this up. So for most of you clicking on this video, probably the big numbers that you wanna take away from this are the Super 35 crops on the R5C. It's 1.38 in 17 by nine and 1.47 in 16 by nine. Now, I apologize if this felt like a math class. I used to be a math teacher, as you can probably tell. But it's important to figure out where all these numbers come from, and we really just use division and multiplication. I think most of us can handle that. If you found some value in this video, please like the video, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.